And what Trading Tribe allows you to do is the process is set up so you literally are encouraged by a group of grown men to essentially act like a wild animal. I don't know. I don't know how other. How, and so, and you can imagine what happens is you know you get these guys coming to these meetings and they've all they've read is the Market Wizards and they think Ed Sequoia is a genius, right? And so they come in and they think we're going to sit here and talk about stop losses and crap like that. And meanwhile, someone's howling like a coyote, you know. And then they never come back again, you know. I mean, the number of times. That Two traders. Darren and Walter pull back the curtain on profitable trading systems, consistent money management, and profitable psychological triggers. Welcome to the Two Traders Podcast. All right, Darren, welcome back to the program. It's Walter here, and we are going to talk about the trading tribe, Darren. How do you feel about that today? Yeah, it sounds really interesting, and it's actually something I know nothing about. So, yeah, what's it all about? In essence, well, many of you know the trader Ed Sequoia. Ed Sequoia is probably one of the more colorful characters in the book, The Market Wizards. And I think that it sort of launched his career as a pseudo guru or something like that after he was featured in the Market Wizards book. But what's interesting to me about Ed is, and you can go to his website, sequoia.com, S-E-Y-K-O-T-A.com, and read about all of his different things, which include things outside of trading altogether. But one of the things that Ed believes in quite strongly is sort of like a uh, it's a subconscious based view of behavior. So it's in many ways it's quite Freudian, but he comes up with his own terms and his own sort of theory of behavior and what he believes in essence, I'll boil it down into a couple of sentences. Most of what we do in our lives it comes from the underlying feelings that we have and so what we do is we play out these little dramas in our lives to enable us to feel the feelings that we have sort of bubbling underneath so we might not even be aware of this so let's say for example you are a 45 year old male and you ha you literally haven't had a cry in six years okay so and you've got these sad feelings underneath and you really just want to to cry so what Ed would say is what you might do is create a situation in your life so that you allow yourself to cry and it's culturally acceptable. Now, the implications for traders are quite obvious. We might set up positions in our lives, trading-wise, so that we end up experiencing emotions that we otherwise couldn't really experience outwardly in terms of you know it being culturally acceptable. So it's kind of like this, you've got this this behind the scenes thing in your subconscious that's plotting and trying to set up situations, these drama, this drama in your life. And, uh, and by doing so, it enables you to experience the emotions that are sort of bubbling underneath that you're not really aware of. And so this is how the trading try. And I, I would recommend that if this resonates with you, you should really buy Ed's book. It's not cheap. You know, it's, it's over $100, I think. But... He's got these tribes around the world where people go through this process. He calls it the trading tribe process. It's free to join these groups. The only thing is a lot of these groups have a bit of a waiting list because they're quite small. And, of course, Ed's become quite popular, and so people have sort of gravitated towards these. But the first thing you should do is read the book because if you, if you read the book, you'll get a good background on what it's all about. And then you know what to expect when you attend a meeting. The meetings that I went to for years, we had people that would come in the door and didn't know what to expect. And so they just knew that Ed Sequoia was great and they were into trading and they wanted to hang out with other traders. But in the book, you learn that the, the, what we do in the meetings has really nothing to do with trading in terms of talking about entries or exits or profits or anything like that. All you're really doing in the trading tribe process is it allows you a situation for you to experience sort of these primal emotions that you can't otherwise experience in life. And it's, and you kind of feel like maybe if, if you're into running or something, you've done a long run, you kind of feel spent, you know, you kind of feel exhausted, and you kind of feel good after you get out of these meetings. So if this is something that makes sense to you and you think, oh, that's really fascinating, I think that it would be something to definitely take a look at. Does that, Darren, do you, does that make sense? Do you have any questions about that? Or what, what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Um, are you sort of saying that we've kind of basically got things that we haven't dealt with maybe from when we were kids and 
and then the mistakes we make trading are kind of forcing us we're kind of deliberately forcing ourselves to deal with those issues that we've got is that what you're saying we're kind of sabotaging you know say um for instance we've got issues with money from when we were a child and then we're kind of trying to force ourselves to confront those things by sort of deliberately making you know the same silly mistakes when we're trading and, and losing money to try and confront that is, is that what you're saying like you know say say you go when you when you pick girlfriends you always pick like the wrong sort but you keep doing it no matter even though you know that it's bad for you are you saying like you know similar sort of thing to that well it, yeah it could be it could be like that ed might say that it comes from there but it could be as simple as you know you live a frustrating life let's say you go to work every day and you're in a cubicle that is tiny and you feel kind of pent up like an animal and your boss is a real asshole and it just things aren't really nice in your life and maybe you're going through a divorce and it's just like a lot of things are happening right so you want to have you like you want to just kind of scream right and you want to rage against you know but but you don't do that you don't allow yourself that outlet so it could be related to earlier you know like you say childhood but it also could just be a recent thing and culturally like in the western world you have no real outlet you're not a boxer or you don't lift weights or you don't play racquetball or, or squash or whatever you don't have anything where you can really get out your aggression so what you do is you set up these little dramas like for example you might go to here's a here's an example okay here's an example and i'm gonna i was gonna write a blog post about this but i'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag there were these two fellows in uh, the Northern Territory in Australia, and one of them had, a, and I think they were like, you know, tradesmen, you know, they're like, I think they work on roads or something, you know, something like that. They were, they're outside and they weren't in an office. And one of them had a bag of Doritos, okay? And he really, I don't know about you, Darren, but if you're anything, anything like my, my wife, when she has a bag of Doritos, it's really tough to, to get your hand in there and get a few out. <laughs> so... So it's pretty tough to get your, get, you know, you know, I've got to be sneaky about it and strategic, you know, when she's not looking and things like that. But so these guys had, there was one bag of Doritos between the two of them and one of the guys wasn't sharing and the other guy threatened him with a stick, right? So then the guy with the Doritos walked over to a witch's hat, right? Which is an orange cone that they have on the side of the road, you know, those caution cones and picks it up, pulls out a uh, hatchet and then threatens the guy that has the stick <laughs> and then and then these bus drivers came by and the bus drivers had to break up the fight and literally tackle the guy with the hatchet and it was all over doritos now what ed sequoia might say is that the the these two guys you know were feeling kind of angry but they didn't have any outlet in their life to release this anger and so they literally had to find an, an everyday situation where they could sort of let this anger bubble out and it happened to be over a bag of doritos which seems quite ridiculous but that's kind of i guess what ed you know what i mean that's kind of what ed would say so it could be related to your childhood i suppose but it could also just be something more recent and and what trading tribe allows you to do is the process is set up so you literally are encouraged by a group of grown men to essentially act like a wild animal. I don't know. I don't know how other. How, and so, and you can imagine what happens is you know you get these guys coming to these meetings and they've all they've read is the Market Wizards and they think Ed Sequoia is a genius, right? And so they come in and they think we're going to sit here and talk about stop losses and crap like that. And meanwhile, someone's howling like a coyote, you know. And then they never come back again, you know. I mean, the number of times that, that someone would show up for the meeting once. And, and we could almost predict it based on one question. I would always ask them. I said, so, have you read the book, The Trading Tribe, the book? And if they said no, we were like, well, this guy ain't going to come back again. But if they said yes, then it was, you know, it was a 50-50 proposition. So it was pretty funny. But, yeah, so it's, I would encourage you. There, there are these around the world. So anyone listening can go to Ed's site and find out if there's one in your city because there probably is one nearby. Did you find that it helped with your trading then to, to go to these classes? Yeah, I did. And But here's the interesting thing. Uh, I spoke to, I was going to go, so I'm in Sydney, right, in Australia. And I was, and um, I originally contacted the group and they were like, oh, you know, so, and it wasn't very far from me either. The Where the meetings were uh, was very, very close actually. And so I contacted them and said, I'm sorry, you have to get on the waiting list because we only have so many slots. You know, they only have spots for five or six guys and, you know, and they have 
more than, you know, a lot of people contacting them. So they said, you're on the waiting list. And so then I contacted the guy in Melbourne and I said, hey, I'd like to go to your group. And I figured, hey, look, it's only every fortnight. I'll fly down to Melbourne for, you know, the night and just go to this meeting because it's worth it to me, right? Because I was really interested in my psychology. And so the guy in Melbourne said, well, we had the meetings, but they got out of hand. We ended up talking about trading. So I just disbanded the group, which I think is a pretty common thing that it, it sort of mutates. And so what happened for to me anyway, and the other guys that are still in the group probably would disagree, but this is what happened for me. I found that the group had drifted away from the, the original goal. So, so Ed holds these trading tribe meetings in his home and you can go there. Now that's not free. I think you have to pay for that. But he holds these meetings and then his, the idea is that he will send these, these traders out into the world and they will set up their own little tribe groups, right? Which are free. So, so that was the idea. Now we had originally in our group a guy who had gone and learned from Ed and then he moved uh, to Queensland. So he had to fly down for the meetings and then he stopped coming, right? And so then in the group, we didn't really have anyone that had the original contact. It's sort of like the apostles, you know, who who actually knew Jesus or whatever, you know. So it's sort of like this. So it kind of changed because in the beginning of the group, you're supposed to beat these drums and pound on these drums, and it sets your mindset. It's sort of it's interesting how the group syncs up to the drumming. Well, our group here in Sydney changed, and we started, um, you know. It, and Ed talks about in his book how it's really important these primal sort of beats on the drum sort of tunes you into what you need, you know, the state of mind you need to be in to do this. Well, our group mutated that completely and ended up like bringing guitars and, and that, you know, and, and so it, it was almost like the focus was on the music. So I remember, I, I always remember the first time when someone said, uh, I think I'd been away on holiday or something for a while, and they said, "Hey, are you going to stay for the music?" I'm like, "What do you mean stay for the music? We d we did you know we did the drumming in the beginning." And they go, "Oh no, we jam now after the uh, <laughs> after the meetings." And I was like, "Whoa!" You know, I was like, "Wow, this has totally changed." You know, like the leader had changed of the group, and it totally. And I was I was like, "No, I'm I'm here for the tribe. You know, I'm not here for the jamming." So I, you know, that was another thing. And then I think what happens also, Darren, is you get kind of in a rut. So what happens with Trading Tribe is you literally experience your emotions in sort of an outward uh, movement, I guess, is one way to say it. So you, it's very physical, like it's physically demanding to do this, right? Yeah. Well, I found that some people in the group, in fact, most people I thought were kind of going through the motions. It's kind of like, you know, that guy on the dance floor that only has the one move and he uses it on every song. I kind of felt like that was the same thing that was going on in Trading Tribe where, you know, you could almost predict what a guy was going to do in the tribe based on who it was because he only had so many moves and it, and it wasn't like they were really feeling the primal, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it was almost like it was, it, it was about the music and it wasn't really about what I, I thought Ed had really wanted it to be about and so... I just left the group and it just started to me it drifted too far away from the from the but it I thought it helped me but I thought it it wasn't on center it wasn't on point anymore it wasn't if Ed walked in I think Ed would definitely have a list of things and say you know look you got to change this you know like for all I know they have like a backing vocalist group and in, in an amp now you know what I mean like it's totally gone to the music and people aren't really feeling it they're just kind of going through the motions I believe or they were when I left so that's just my sort of take on it but I think it's difficult I think the most difficult thing is to keep it centered on what it's supposed to be on uh, which is about experiencing emotions and not to talk about trading or you know, get into music or whatever else. Um, but that's my yeah. that's my view. Yeah, it, it sounds crazy, but you know, I I kind of relate to it. Uh, you know, when I sort of get to the start of the week, I feel myself kind of being built up, like I'm getting ready for. You know, like when you used to um, play rugby at school, we all used to sort of get together in the changing rooms and have a huddle, and then you do this kind of running on the on the spot and chanting, you know, counting to ten, a bit like the hacker, you know. And, you know, that kind of ties in with my feelings that trading is, is like a sort of performance sport. You have to, like, kind of get built up and, you know, get in tune with your feelings and, and kind of, you know, I, I kind of get that feeling Monday morning, like, like I want to sort of, you know, run on the spot and, and scream, you know, but you don't do it. You sort of suppress those feelings. And we know traders that suppress feelings don't perform as well. 
So, you know, it makes some sense, definitely. And the interesting thing you said about, you know, some people kind of got into it more than others. You know, that also ties in with, you know, what they say that, you know, not everybody can learn to be a trader. You have to have some sort of, you know, innate ability as well. Or you at least have to know your particular brand of ability and then focus on that when you trade rather than just everybody doing the same thing. And that's, you know, I think that's why, um, you know, certain strategies kind of work for certain people. And then, the, you know, the mirror opposite works for others. So, yeah, it sounds, well, are you going to start one, Walter? Are you going to start a, a new <laughs> tribe? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, Ed, no, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, probably not. I mean, think, I think Ed sort of has uh, his, his mitts on it because he went through and he contacted all of the tribe leaders throughout the world and he wanted to make sure that they were still reporting back to him to one i think tell him that they were still in business basically they're still meeting and two to kind of see who was running it and if they had any connection to him and they kind of you know if they knew basically the trading tribe process as he talks about it so and and you know at this point the sydney group as far as I know, they don't have anyone who's actually met Ed and, and gone through the process with Ed. So, you know, he kind of has this list on his website where he's he's actually pulled quite a few groups off the list because they haven't they haven't really reported back to Ed or he doesn't really know who's you know who's who's there and what they're doing. So yeah, so he can't, he's kind of cleaned that up a bit. So I mean, I'll, you could certainly do something similar, and I think it would be worthwhile for a lot of people. I also believe, though, like you, Darren, that you can do other things like you can meditate. You can do something physically exhausting like swim far or run far. Do something to yeah. kind of get that out of your system. It's not the same as Trading Tribe for sure. But, it, you know, I think those sorts of things help. And I find it fascinating the number of excellent traders, especially traders who trade sort of short-term time frames, who have some sort of background in sport you know, where they, they've played sport at a high level because I think that there's something about the discipline and the exertion and that, you know, and, and being sort of very regimented that helps traders. I don't think it's, and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it's as important for someone who's trading the weekly charts, but I think it's it's quite critical for those who are trading the the lower time frame charts. There's a lot, there are a lot of more, there are a lot more pitfalls um, in that but i think i think your your thoughts are are really really interesting i think we could probably even do another another uh podcast on on that on what you were talking about because that's that's quite fascinating really yeah i mean um, I, i've never heard of this before but i'm, I'm gonna check go and check it out now um you know i'm kind of into anything um psychology based at the moment um so yeah i'll, de I'll definitely check it out he worked with another guy chris faulkner who who did a similar thing, a more a way of reframing your emotions and putting them in, in context. So, uh, in context, in a different context. So, yeah, really interesting. Yeah, that's why I wanted to let you know, just because I thought it was something that you'd be interested in. Also, let all the listeners know, because despite the fact that Sydney, you know, the group here may have sort of, I believe, strayed, and I'm sure they have their own viewpoints on, on, on where they're at and what they've done, but. To me, they strayed away from the, the main focus of the trading tribe, but that doesn't mean that um, you can't find a really good tribe. And, and the thing is, it's free, you know? It, it's such a great, if, if this resonates with you, it's such a great way to try and pull those emotions out so that they don't pop up in your trading. And, and if, you know, like Darren says, you know, these sorts of things, uh, a lot of people are starting to realize, especially if, you're, if you've been in trading for a while, starting to realize the importance of really getting a handle on your emotions and making sure that they don't, they don't sabotage your results. So it's, it's, I think it's something to definitely pursue if it, if it makes sense to you. So yeah, I'm glad that is, we were able to, to is, lift Is the there anything a that um, you have incorporated into your sort of daily trading yeah. routine? You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I can talk about lots of things. So one one thing that I do is I try and every day do something outside of the office. So I've got like this home office and, you know, I'm quite lucky. It's got a great view of the ocean and and the waves and it's a, br it's a brilliant spot to be. But I try and go outside and either run or walk or surf or do something every day. The other thing I do is I've got a couple of different... Um, routine. So when I go in to my charts and I look to make a decision based on what I'm going to trade, 
usually that's in the morning and that's when the, my daily candles close and then of course I don't really enter my trades until the end of the Asian session sort of I want it to trigger during London or New York right so uh, when I'm looking at of course at daily and, and uh, uh, weekly weekly charts so so what I'll do is I'll listen to a a track that's uh, it's a brainwave entrainment are you are you familiar with that Darren uh, no it's a new one on me again Walter okay <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's real simple. So, so the, I think these came about in the fifties or sixties. They're really old. But so basically, what what they found was, and you can you can look this up on Wikipedia. Maybe we'll put we'll put a link in the show notes. Basically, what br brainwave entrainment does yeah. is you listen to a sound. Uh, you have to use headphones for this, like earbuds or something like that. And the reason why is the sound in one ear is slightly different from the sound in the other. So you might hear these beats, and it might sound like a helicopter or something weird, like a little boo, 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 or something like that, right? So what happens is because they're slightly off, your your uh, your your my your brain sort of makes uh, an adjustment. So there's different brain waves that we're in depending on what we're doing and what you know. Basically, you know, we're like you and I right now. We are in beta, right? Which is sort of everyday thinking and talking and stuff like that. But you might notice when you're driving and you get sort of sleepy, you sort of feel like, oh, where did where did all that time go? Or I've driven 85 kilometers since I last, you know, realized where I was or something like that. Has that happened to you, Darren? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so that means you're kind of drifting into alpha and so forth. So what I do is I listen to this brainwave entrainment which is just a bunch of weird sounds and it puts me in a, a state so that i'm sort of at peak performance and i want to be at that now if i were a lower time frame trader where i'd sit down and, and trade the charts for four or five hours or something like that i would definitely do that right before i sat down but for me i just want to do it before i make my decisions because i want to i want to be clear with what i'm thinking and what i'm planning so it's a little bit different for me compared to some traders but in essence, that's what I'm doing is I'm putting myself in the right mindset so that I can make really clear decisions. And I'm just using a brainwave track to do that. So and the other thing I do is during the day, sometimes I'll have, <laughs> I know it sounds like it sounds like I'm an old nanny or something, but I'll have like a nap, you know, and before I have my nap, I'll listen to they are basically hypnosis tracks and they set me up for trying to overwrite my underlying things that we were talking about before that the trading tribe tries to get to. So these, these underlying negative feelings and thoughts that are bubbling underneath in your subconscious. So these tracks are meant to overwrite that with something positive. And then finally, when I go to sleep at night and, you know, it took some finagling to get my wife to agree to it, but, but basically I have these, these subliminal tracks that play in our bedroom <laughs> all night long, all night long. And they're on repeat. They're there's eight of them. And so these tracks, it just sounds like the ocean, right? It just sounds like ocean waves, which which is funny because if we open the window, we can also yeah. <laughs> usually hear the ocean. So you can't tell the difference between, you know, the window being open or these tracks. But basically, these tracks, these tracks are, are also subliminal messages that are meant to help you to, again, sort of take out the negative and, and overwrite it with the positive. And so that's basically, those are, those are the three things that I do for my, or four things, I guess, if you count, you know, physical activity that I do for my trading. And, you know, for those of you that have spent any time working, we talk about trading psychology stuff. We talk about all that in the trading psychology course and all that. But I think anyone can do this. You just have to go and find the right resources. And I'll plug those in at the bottom of the of this uh, podcast so you guys can, can go and do your own homework. But yeah, so that's basically what I do. So I don't do the trading tribe anymore, but I feel like I kind of have it covered. But I do miss the drumming sessions. There's something really interesting <laughs> about, you know, having a bunch of people in a room. And it's, it's fascinating, Darren. Like, it, if you go to trading tribe, you'll see. It's it's like, I don't know how, you, if you're into music or, but like the group actually becomes one so the drumming starts out and it's really scattered and it's kind of all all over the shop and by the end of five or ten minutes you have everyone sort of playing this song you know it's like jazz or something it's weird how it yeah. just kind of becomes a song out of just chaos it's really kind of cool actually yeah yeah um wow yeah yeah see i'm i do i, I just don't go that deep really and you know i'm gonna certainly have a look at it now I kind of do a weird, you know, like if I'm trading the four hour charts, 
I do like a weird thing. I have like an alarm that goes off maybe like five minutes before the the bar closes. But then like in the next four hour period in between, I kind of like plan out exactly what I'm going to do in my mind and say maybe I'm going to go into town and go to the bank and then go and have some sushi and they've got Wi-Fi there and I can connect there and trade the next bar. And I kind of break my whole day up with like, sort of planning activities in between my periods of trading so it's like completely the, the other end of the spectrum but I suppose it's kind of doing the same thing really I'm trying to sort of focus my mind in between the trading by kind of forcing me to do these kind of activities and be organized and disciplined in between but um, certainly no wave sounds inside or outside my window <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's really cool, though. I've I've heard similar things about you know planning your day around the four hour. I know people who have jobs, and they literally they'll make sure that they go to the toilets <laughs> when the four yeah. hour bar closes, so they can go and set their break even or whatever they need to do. Like, yeah, that's really interesting. So you, I know you've got a pretty flexible life, so you can kind of that's that's interesting. So you can actually say like, okay, well, I know I've got, you know, three hours and 50 minutes between the next one, so I can do this or that or whatever. That's yeah. really cool, yeah. Yeah, That's really well, cool. I think the important thing is not to spend that three hours, 50 minutes staring at the chart when you know you've got nothing to do anyway. I mean, obviously, if, if your approach means you're, you know, you're waiting for a for something to happen and you, you're, you have to watch the charts, but, you know, when I used to watch the charts when I didn't have to, you know, so say if my if my my next action uh, trading wise is going to be in four hours time, if you sit there and watch the charts, you just completely destroy your your psyche. You just hit it with loads of information that the brain doesn't need. And before you know it, you've completely changed your plan for the day and what you were going to do, um, you know, with your with your trading. And it's it's a killer. So, yeah definitely try and be active when when you know when you can during the trading day it's, it's made life a lot easier for me yeah that's awesome advice and one thing that I, I i can't remember if it was in the naked forks book that i wrote or whatever but i i tell people this because it's exactly what you're saying darren but it's actually an exercise i say look if you don't believe me that you know that things can totally change like people get sucked into watching you know the four-hour candle print or whatever the one-hour candle doesn't matter i say what you want to do is, and it works really well with the four hour, what you want to do is every, say, 15 minutes, um, take a snapshot, like a screenshot of that four hour candle and write your thoughts down on what you think, okay? It's really good if you're in a trade, but uh, even if it's a demo trade or, a, you know. But so what happens is, so people are taking these snapshots of the four hour candle and they've got these thoughts and they can go back and see what they were thinking before because they've got a record of it and then what they think after the four-hour candle actually closes. And so you can compare and go, you know, well, I would have dumped the trade based on what happened an hour and a half into the four-hour candle or whatever, you know. And people start getting into these because they totally change by the time by the, time the candle closes. It's going to be look totally different than it does right now. It's always the case, especially yes. during the last 15 minutes. And, and so like you say, it's exactly what you're saying. Actually, I didn't think of it this way, but you're right. It's 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 information overload basically. It's you have too much information and you're trying to assimilate it and then you end up changing your plan and that's exactly yeah. what's going on there. But I I'm a big fan of of being able to have a record of that, you know, and say, okay, well look, look, I thought, you know, three hours ago I thought this was gonna be a losing trade, but now look, the candle's closed and it look, actually looks quite good. So yeah, so that's another way to you know, to sort of see that happening in yourself. If you think, oh, well, I wouldn't do that or whatever. But I think we all do, generally speaking, we all do. Um, if given a chance, we all do. <laughs> we, all, we all will overfit or, or, you know, add too many optimizers or whatever to our system and decide, oh, well, in this case, we need to do this or whatever. You know, it's, it's good to just step away. Do you feel like you're fresh? So let's say you go to the bank, you go and have some sushi or whatever, and then you come back to your charts three and a half hours later, do you feel like you have a better perspective on that candle if you, you know, if you haven't actually been watching it print? Yeah, definitely. If if I sit and watch the charts, I I find it physically draining. And if I sit and watch the charts all day, by the end of the day, I'm I'm just completely shot, you know. Yep. And uh, if I've been active, especially, you know, um, 
I sort of I, I walk quite a bit when I sort of plan out these things I'm doing quite a lot of walking as well so there's like a actual physical exertion going on and yeah you just feel you just feel fresher and you know I didn't give it any any thought before but obviously you know I know now you know what's happening is is that I'm I'm giving the brain a chance to to focus when it needs to and not trying to focus it all the time because we have this kind of a limited amount of ability, uh, of ability to sort of focus uh, and make rational decisions and if you try and do it all, all the time the brain just gives up and and you just resort to you know using your feelings to decide so um yeah it, it helps massively and I, I don't i don't think it even matters what you use but if you do something it it certainly helps you know? yeah absolutely absolutely that's great advice too with the walking i had a i had a professor in at university and that was his whole life's work he actually just recently died but he was well known for his research and it was that if you want to put yourself into a better mood you just need to do a, a 15 minute brisk walk and uh, and they compared it to everything and it won out they would they tried music they tried um, very intense physical exertion they tried you know eating a candy bar or hit a sugar or something like that or whatever uh, laughter the thing that helped the most was a short brisk walk and that was the like literally the magic pill for your mood and i think as you say it also helps you kind of just it puts you in a good mind frame in one sense but also it kind of it's like a break it's like a mental break i mean just imagine you know i can't imagine anything worse than watching the charts for eight or nine hours it's just and i used to do that of course like most of us probably did but it's just absolutely like you say it's absolutely draining and you feel like you know you're plugged into the matrix or something you know you just want to it's just like you want to get out like you just i want it to be over you know it's insane really yeah i think yeah i mean is that what's going on do we actually you know we all fear being in the trades because once you're in a trade really we know our brains know even though we might do all our analysis and and feel that it's you know a really good entry and it's you know it's it's bound to win but our brain is like deep down is saying well you know it really could be a win or a loss mate so don't you know count your chickens yet and deep down we we've got that fear is always always there and so when whenever we are in a trade that's playing on our mind and if you can just break away from that then you know you probably end up being um you know a better trader i i, I put in one of my daily trader videos that you know my best trades are when i'm not there so you know, it definitely works works for me being away from the charts <laughs> yeah i spoke to a trader i spoke to a trader this uh, last week she basically stepped away from trading but she left a couple of trades on i think two trades on and those were the best trades of her life you know they've been going they've been going for years literally years and uh, and, and another trader i know he he had the same similar experience where he was trading or it was over the summer in the northern hemisphere and then he forgot about a trade that he left on and then he came back to it i think he went you know in the mountains or something he was away from his computer basically and he thought that he was flat but he was actually still had a position on and that ended up being the the trade that saved his year and, and all that sort of thing we hear these stories about people who you know basically by being away from the charts they trade really well <laughs> which is, is a whole another uh, whole another idea isn't it but yeah so i'm 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 with you on that one it sounds yeah so what what can we say here in terms of of wrapping this up so when we're talking about your emotions and what would you suggest you suggest a, a walk or something like that what would you suggest the people out there who are feeling a bit like maybe some of these emotions are bubbling up and maybe sabotaging some of their trades what would you suggest Darren one thing that I incorporated was the majority of my decisions are either at the close of the bar or the open of the new bar. So essentially at the same time. So I've kind of forced my strategy to give me uh, breaks in between. Whereas before I would like enter a trade and, and, and then watch it to see what it did. And that's when my decision would be made. So I just changed the, um, my method to give me a gap in between so there was a you know definite gaps through the day where there was nothing for me to do and i accepted that and then you know go and do something so it could be like you say walking the dog listening to some music just you know some sort of physical activity or you know 
uh, get, just getting out of the house, like you say. And I, I think, you know, just something simple like that makes um, makes a big difference. Yeah, and I would say the same thing. I'd say if I were, if I, you know, if I wanted a list of three things to do to help me in terms of my emotions, I would have an outlet, right? So whether it's walking, running, swimming, something that you do could be playing squash or something physical. I would also probably want to keep a record. So maybe a photographic journal where you take a screenshot of your trades and your thoughts. Uh, and, and definitely, as you say, the third thing I would say is, is, is take time away from the charts. Unless you're trading, you know, unless you're literally trading the five minute charts or 10 minute charts or three minute charts, something like that, then there's no reason to watch the candles. In fact, you'll probably mess yourself up. We both agree on that, right? It's probably, yeah. you're probably going to be better off simply taking the trade or entering the pro, you know, entering your orders, walking away. And then when you see it again, you're fresh. You've got, I, I love waking up in the morning and looking at my charts because my daily candles, well, this time of year, the daily candles haven't quite closed, but because they close at uh, 9 a.m. here. But basically, having not seen what happened overnight during, which for me is basically New York, having not seen that is so good because basically I see the, I see London to about, you know, midday London time. And that's about it. So the rest of that I don't see. So I don't see New York much at all now, this time of year. And so what's great about that is in the morning I see these candles and it's like it's like a new chart. I can I can now interpret and go, oh wow, it totally reversed. You know, it's it yesterday yeah. it looked like a breakout and now it's got this long tail or whatever. And so it's it's just so fresh. And if I know for a fact when I'm watching these candles um, unfold, it's just you don't get that fresh interpretation. You don't. You don't see it for what for what it is. You, you've got all these other thoughts that clog up your your thinking. So yeah. yeah, that's what I would say. Definitely do those. Did did was it you that told me about the the judge that would always give people parole in the morning, but then in the afternoon he would never give anyone parole. No, that's was it. You that told me no, that? no, but that's yeah. fascinating. It was it was, it was some uh, NLP neuro linguistic programmers they they were looking at um how when you know when you're fresh your your brain processes the information differently yeah so he was really nice in the morning by the afternoon when he was a bit grouchy and he he was tired he'd just send everyone back to jail so <laughs> so yeah that's yeah in the morning when you're fresh that's the time to take in that new data and and then make your decisions Good wow point, well. that's fascinating yeah i um well, obviously, that tells you that the smart lawyers would have make sure that their clients were scheduled in the morning then, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'd, exactly. Yeah, You'd want that, yeah. All right, Darren, well, thanks for your time. We'll see you in the next session. Thanks for your time, and we'll see, we'll see you next time. Cheers, Walter. Bye.